three. Hi. I wanted to mention that the behind me is an Air Force poster that actually shows the UFO, saying that this is a freaker. Here we have a UFO that uh, represents a space that I believe visited the Earth thousands of years ago. And I think they're coming here on a regular basis. I chased them in the Air Force several times. They're here in large numbers, more than most people realize. Newfon, for example, gets uh, almost a thousand reports a month. And Francis Crick, the founder of DNA and the Nobel Prize winner, said life did not evolve first on Earth. A highly advanced civilization became threatened, so they devised a way to pass on their existence. Probably uh, either sending spaceships or sending in aboard uh, satellites of the way. In any case, he feels that we have alien DNA. Our scientists tell us that uh, we were cavemen 10,000 years ago and uh, didn't do much other than hunting. And uh, in our cave art, we find that there's pictures of what look like UFOs as you can see here. And here in the Lacan's cave in France, in the Hall of Bulls, right above the bulls, is a series of UFOs. So it appears that our ancestors some 10,000 years ago were well aware of the fact that UFOs existed and were visiting Earth. The researchers in the GNOME project believe it's so-called non-coding sequence of human DNA is no less than the genetic extraterrestrial life forms. And uh, the point is that even scientists agree that uh, we have DNA from aliens. Even the Bible quotes says that the felon were here on earth in those days and also afterwards and the children of the gods and the daughters of humans and took them as wives, whichever they pleased. That was in chapter six of Genesis. Now, one of the things that appears that the aliens did while they were here in the ancient times was to build various pyramids. And they're showing a bunch of pyramids here from all over the world. And there's literally hundreds of pyramids and these objects are very big. The ones in China, for example, are much bigger than those even in Egypt. And the main area in Qing, China, has over a hundred pyramids. And this gives you an idea of what the ancient pyramids looked like. They think that they're some 10,000 years old. And interesting, most have flat roofs on them. There's some of the close up to the pyramids of China, uh, as you can see. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, near the pyramids, and when they dig into them, they find all these pipe fragments. And the pipe fragments appear to be for carrying water. And the estimated 12,000 year old pyramid is right here. That's kind of interesting. And these are much bigger than the ones in Egypt even. And I thought that the blonde, blue-eyed, light-skinned visitors came to Earth and mated with our people. There's one of the pyramids with a flat roof. And we feel that the UFOs landed on the pyramids and they could gain potion energy from the pyramids. And through the pyramids are these pipes that apparently carried uh, water and possibly electricity made of calcium oxide and metal. And this is thought to be 12,000 years old. It's interesting that Nikola Tesla also had a huge tower 
and he dug into the ground some 420 feet to get electrical energy. So we know that there's electrical energy that's in the earth, probably from the lightning. Uh, Christopher Dunn, for example, said that the pyramids seem to be actually power stations and that they can produce communication off in space, that they can actually test and see that the pyramids are generating power and uh, communication throughout space. Lightning appears to be drawn to high places and they apparently take this power and put it aboard the uh, UFOs, or at least that's what they're estimating. Famous researchers, for example, which is one of the areas in the world with as many blue-eyed blonde people, say that uh, they share a common ancestor. And the theory is supported by a study of the alternative form of the SLC 24A5 gene, which is found and associated with light skin and recently originated in some six to 10,000 years ago. This shows you the area of Europe in blue, where the most of the blue eyes are, and then the darker blue is where there's also lesser numbers of blue eyed bombs which goes all the way from the Scotland and Ireland, Germany and France and so on. And uh, the beautiful blondes that we have today are the result of this uh, alien interference in our Earth. This is a blonde that's 4,000 years old that you can actually go see in China. And she is, exists and she's on display in the museum. The human skin colors obviously go from very light skin to the blondes all the way to the dark skin blacks. And the question is, are we really, are our ancestors blonde aliens or are they chimpanzees? I happen to believe that it's more likely that we have ancestors that are from space. Here's Emperor Quinn, the Chinese emperor, who was one of the first emperors in China, and he claimed that he was um, represented by the gods, and that uh, he, in fact, was a god himself. In India, the temples, but at the top of the temples is what appears to be a standard UFO, which we even see today. And the Hindu god Lord Shiva, according to their biblical information, could fly in some of these UFOs. Sumerian gods, the Anaruki, also were said that they came from space and could fly and taught the Sumerians how to establish their cities and uh, learn languages and so on. It gives them a great deal of education. In Bosnia, we have large pyramids. Uh, here's one of the Asko, Bosnia. And one interesting thing is that even underwater, we have pyramids all over the world underwater. For example, like the Kiva and the Azores, the pyramids were built and then gradually the water filled them later. Of course, we have the pyramids in Egypt. But it's felt that the earliest ones were built by the aliens and that the Egyptians simply copied them later on. Here's one of the uh, drawings in Egypt, which shows a boat or 
a UFO type object in the world, the boat of Soka. Even in England, there's a types of pyramids are tall hills. But it, one thing to realize is that it would take thousands of hours and thousands of men to make these kind of objects here on Earth. It was thought that they had some kind of help to move the um, large stones and um, a great deal of Earth into a position there. I happen to chase, like I mentioned before, a large mothership. And uh, interestingly enough, right near Stonehenge, there is a uh, cursus area where the UFOs could have landed. And they have this area that's about a mile in diameter. And it's dug, dug six feet deep, like you can see here. Uh, a mile up and a mile back and a UFO fits in there very nicely just like the one that I chased over England. And uh, interestingly enough there's one similar to this in a photograph of the moon and uh, a cylinder shaped UFO which obviously are quite large or a mile or bigger. On the moon there's volcanoes they're not as large as they are on Mars or Earth, but they're all plenty of volcanoes. Also on Mars, there's a huge tower that's some three miles high, or 4.8 kilometers high. Also on Mars, there's a moon base. This is a Chinese photo indicating that um, there's some kind of aliens working on Mars, probably doing mining. But uh, the aliens seem to be very interested in mining and do mining both on the Earth and Mars. And here we look at Mars and at the top of it, Mars, you can see back in 1995, there's a white Arctic ice area. And this ice area since then has melted, which will indicate that the warming of the Earth and Mars is going on throughout the universe. There's one of the most important areas on Mars, it's called Cydonia. And if you notice, there's a drawing or a statue of a, of a man or a Martian. And on the lower left is the DNM pyramid. I'll show you these up close. There again is the um, man from Mars, so to speak. We had lots of interesting uh, conversations. They figured that there's some thousand indications this is a photo of a real humanoid person. Or Probably a Martian. And here's the uh, D and M pyramid, which you can see from space. Well, also on Mars, where the uh, rovers regularly take pictures of UFOs, and here's one of the cylinder UFOs that they take them. Also on Mars, there's these huge trees or some kind of a plant life that grows to be quite large. But there's like tree-like areas on Mars. And interesting in the craters, this is the side of the crater, you can see where the water comes down on the side of the crater. And on Mars, in the summer, the uh, mold or moss grows all over Mars and screen and there's an uh, indication of life there, certainly in the summer. Why would she be naked? Also, we find on Mars uh, open pit mines as well as caves indicating that the mining is going on underground. But this is an interesting open pit mine here. We have similar ones on Earth, so 
playing gold and so on. And then there's this sign here. And this is a sign up close. Looks like Y A I H or something similar to that, which could be Yahweh. This is a name for God. Also on Mars, we find vehicles of some kind, almost like a bus, or maybe it works in the mine and does mining operations. Here we have what looks like a walled city with the walls on the sides there and the um, <laughs> going out uh, indicating that there was uh, buildings on Mars at one time. There's the largest volcano in the universe, or at least in our solar system, Olympus Mons Volcano. And uh, back in 1976, a Viking landed on Mars and took a picture of Big Joe, which had the green moss growing on it. Not only are there moss, but there's crinoids, which is an early type shell that we also find on Earth, or seen always that exist on Mars in the past. Also, I like to think that uh, the story of Noah may in fact be Noah who came from Mars bringing animals and so on. And uh, <clears throat> this is a picture possibly of what Noah might look like. Also, when we go up close, we find that there's holes drilled in the rocks and they have a shape that indicates the construction. And there's a bowl found on Mars. And the European Space Agency takes pictures of areas that look like lakes that uh, people don't realize that in the summer, the temperature goes up to 92 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface of Mars. I don't know if you can see this very well, but it's kind of like a barrel on the side of the mountain. We think that the civilization on Mars was something like that in Egypt when, when they came here. They established these pharaohs and these statues. Also on Mars is uh, indications that they have uh, lions or panthers of some kind. Also a stadium that was writing on the front there. There's an interesting rock that I found on Mars, and the rock has uh, a lot of things on it. Some people claim that there's a lizard on the top here, but there's writing on it. It has writing up close, an E, a Y here, and even a face. I don't know if you can see that very well, but all over Mars you find these drawings, hieroglyphics like they have on Earth. Another area that's interesting is these huge tubes that are on Mars. Some are thousands of feet wide and go on for hundreds of miles in different directions. For example, here's these tubes are going in four directions. There's another one here. They'll be up closer, up to some 3,000 feet wide. In other words, you could hide a city inside here. Well, a transport system. Again, here's even a larger one. It's probably a mile wide. Also on Mars, we find indications of water going over the side of the crater. And we have a mermaid as well. And what really convinced me that there is life on Mars was this picture. And I said, it's like you to go home. That's not a real picture, obviously. One thing that I wanted to mention before I go is that uh, I saw UFOs land on the Parker Cross from where I live, just across the street on a regular basis. And I got to be fairly friendly with the people in the UFO. The uh, male wore an outfit, something like the uh, 
all the permits used to be all in black and they um, they took us inside the craft and inside the craft was much like the stainless steel kitchen it was very interesting and this is what the lady who talked to me about nine times looked like that's not the lady who's an alien this is my wife <laughs> when i met my wife i thought she looked so much like the alien lady that i fell in love with her here's another picture of it. But the alien lady looks very much like this. And when I was there, she said that it's very important that we treat the environment correctly. And she said, you must see what the wonderful world looks like. And uh, we flew from Meagher, Illinois, to the uh, <coughs> Appalachians in just a few minutes. Interesting enough, uh, we didn't have the feeling on the flight. I have 5,000 flying hours and it's, it wasn't like that at all. It was almost like being in the living room. The only thing was that the floor tilted once in a while. They took us up to Alaska and um, we would have lunch overlooking a beautiful scene. Now what the lady told me very briefly was that uh, their planet and their son was uh, dying and they had to find a new place to go to it. So they decided to look all around the universe, so to speak, and they found our Earth is probably the nicest planet in this part of the universe. And he, they're very upset that humans are destroying Earth. And they feel that all species are equal and that uh, they will be coming here in the future when their son actually is close to dying and they will make a new world, so to speak. There will not be any wars, there will not be any pollution, there will not be any abortion or crime. They will clean up the environment and will be a wonderful world. So I look forward to the time that they come. They really need help. And if you're interested in more details, I have the book, uh, Strange Craft, written by John Guerra, which is actually about me. And it goes into detail on all the simulation. So I thank you for listening to me today. And uh, I'll Well, thank you very much, George. That was fantastic. Okay. Well, I'm glad that I was able to do it and uh, have much more detail about Mars and the Moon, but you know, there's time limitations as well. And, okay. Uh, Thank you so much, George. It's been a, uh, really nice to have you make this presentation for us. It's very kind of you, and uh, um, we'll speak to you soon. Folks, uh, give them a big round of applause. Thank you so much.